Well, this started out as a, we thought a quick and dirty little project because we got some questions in it of being dirty but not quick. And then a graduate student decided not to finish and that slowed things down a little bit more. But this big title, I looked at all, mentioned all the things that we did look at. And the reason I'm talking about these because everything else we measured didn't matter. Like calcium, doesn't matter. Zinc didn't matter, no impact. But there were some questions we were getting, and okay, we put in anaerobic digesters, which we only have a few in our area, there's not many. But, you know, what does that do to these nutrient management plants? And we were looking around for numbers, ratios, whatever that we could, we knew, we knew generally what happened, but so let's try to get some numbers. That was really the motivation here. And so this is not new, in fact, Anaerobic di mesophilic digestion of swine manure is kind of like a yawner. I mean, it's, we've been doing it forever. We know it can reduce BOD5 and COD. That's what my environmental engineers get excited about in streams. They rarely know anything about what happens with nutrients. They don't even understand that. I usually look at bottle solids because this stuff's rather chunky. It's not soluble COD that's nice and neat. It's, it's harder to deal with. And... Uh, and then we could look at BS destruction things to kind of answer the question, did we get this digested so that we could learn something about like mineralization of nitrogen? Now, I'm gonna put a plug in for a, a paper that was done in 1991 by Dr. David Hill. He's now retired from Auburn. There, he has a series of papers and there, they, he ha that is the standard for theory and modeling of mesophilic, and he has thermophilic papers too. I'm not promoting that, but there's a lot of people doing stuff. I always go back to here, okay, and I'll show you a couple of reasons. First of all, there's two models. One's two couple differential equations, then he modeled the model with two orthogonal functions. One's a source, basically a, a methane production function, and an inhibition function. So there was a whole bunch of work, and what I really appreciate about what he did was he did the you know, the real nerdy theoretical work, and then he stepped back and said, I'm gonna get it where you can do it on a calculator or spreadsheet and get the same result. So that equation up there, if long, as long as that beta, which is the inhibition function is one or less, that is the equation for digestion. Assuming well mixed, plug flow, all that kind of stuff. And in that, he also defines some key parameters. One is, this, what he calls an A, is the unstressed VS reduction ratio. In other words, how much volatile solids do I actually destroy? Not remove, destroy. And that usually, you start looking at field digesters, you have storage in there, you have a hard time. Did I really destroy or is it just hanging out in the digester? So he's really looking at destruction because you got a half a liter of methane for every gram VS destroyed in the equation. So then he set some things up about critical loading. So, we use swine, actually our goal is basically, we did some poultry litter, but we say we've got to do a swine first to figure out if our little idea is working, okay? But these are the numbers from his work, and so this A means that, okay, swine manure, if I have a good mesophilic, well-mixed, steady-state type stuff, 63% of the volatile matter will be destroyed with a critical loading rate of six, and my letters are not showing up. Grams of volatile solids per liter of digester volume day. And notice he's got dairy and poultry numbers that are very similar. And folks are interested in poultry digestion, you see that 4.2? That's the critical loading rate. Why? Ammonia, ammonium inhibition. And that's in his inhibition function. So anyway, enough of the theory. I say a little data. We got lots of data. We have some on field digesters, but I wanted, I was looking around, I want to know how much organic N is mineralized. Well, how does total anatomical nitrogen increase? Is there anything happening to phosphorus? It should, is it being solubilized? Is it being put in organic forms? What's happening? And so that's what we're after, trying to, like we thought, a quick and dirty, but it took months to do this test. So we're looking at reductions and transformations of TS and VS. We've done COD, but to get represents samples in little bitty tubes. You talk about sampling error, it's plus or minus 20%, just the sampling error. We looked at forms of nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and sulfur. We did look at calcium and a bunch of others. Digestion doesn't do anything to those, so I'm not gonna talk about those. And we also used batch reactors that we have verified were well below inhibition levels, okay? So that became our limiting thing. So our methods were, I have a gestation bar, 
I have a lagoon where they recycle flush because we wanted to come up with mixes that were similar to flush and pit recharge. We didn't quite get the full <coughs> pit recharge concentration because we couldn't do it and not have inhibition. So we took fresh solids in lagoon water and made our mixes for the test. We used 1.8 liter batch reactors appropriately purchased at Walmart <laughs> and at an aquarium and here. And it was, took a while just to get that heat balance, but we kept it at 35C. We've got an ASAB paper we talked about the technique. Uh, that we're not going to get all into that right now. And then we had to decide, well, what can we use to figure out where we are? And yeah, you can look at methane, but oh, by the way, a lot of the other things, even in my own department where they're trying to do stuff with mini pilot scale digesters, if you do traditional <coughs> balances, you got to rely on methane. And what happened to the grad student? He had leaks all the time. So I'm watching him going, I'm not doing that. <laughs> you know, and the little bitty vials, it's great for soluble uh, VS and COD, but it's a pain when you have swine manure. So that's why we went to this. And so what are we going to watch? Well, we did have some bags, but we said we're going to measure what goes in and what comes out, and we're going to watch pH. We can monitor it with that. And so um, I'll show you the. I'm going to skip through this, but basically we can watch pH to know when they're making acids or VFAs being formed. And when does it turn the curve and start having <coughs> methane? And you would see it in the little bags that we hooked to it. We just took it outside and let it go. So that gave us the way to monitor this. So pay a student, basically went in at a certain time of day, shook the shook air reactor, took uh, temperature measurements, pH measurements, that kind of thing, monitored the th three liter bags and uh, monitor, you know, to keep track of that and then basically keeps track of things in a spreadsheet. Basically, once we got to what was hovering around the seven and a half pH, we called it good and emptied it. So basically the steps are simple. Get a well mixed sample. That took a little time. Find out what's in it. Load up your bottles. Make sure you get your water up to 35C. Load up your bottles. Do all those mixing and pH monitoring. And then once you think it's done, take it out and well mix again and see what's left in the bottle. So that's, we went, really went real simple. I said, I can believe what I can do is wet chemistry. And even there we have mixing problems, even in a, something like two liters. So before and after, we measured all these things, total volatiles and uh, using standard techniques. We included nitrate. We didn't think there would be much going on, but we did. We did get total and soluble phosphorus, did just total potassium and sulfur and then a bunch of others that we're not talking about because there's nothing to show here. So, And we've got a pretty darn good service lab. Uh, Dr. Moore was the director at that time. Dr. Um, I can't remember his name, Dr. Lene, is now taking it over. And basically, all the latest equipment, good technicians, and so we use them for all this work. Like we said, we got it from the gestation barn. We wanted to get one, 1.2, 2% total solids mixes. Why? Because that's that's in a range that comes out some of our swine barns. Actually, the one at our farms are like 1 to 1.2. And what did I get? Well, I got 0 0.9, 1.2, 1.9. 1 so, okay, I'm happy. I know what it is. Did three, rec three replicate digesters for each one of them. And we had to do a little upfront trial and error. We roughly had an idea, but batch reactors and regular reactors are totally different. How far can I go and not have inhibition? Because we would see it. It'd go <coughs> acid and never come back. So we did all of that and find okay, we can go up to here, now let's do the real test. So that's what part of me not quick. So some of our results, again, I apologize on the screen, that looked great. Now it looks horrible. <laughs> but um, before we started, <laughs> basically we're looking at uh, the, basically the VS content in grams per liter is quote unquote our measure of organic load. So I got 6.1, 9.05, and 13.74 that you can't see because of that washed out in the yellow. The key thing though is the VSTS, about the same, but as I added more solids, it went up 0.71 to 0.74. So that's common in liquid systems. We have a number of 0.8 something in the standards, but when you start looking at flush systems, it can go down. So it's not always the same, but it, as solids went up, it went up. So 
That's where we're going to start in terms of the makeup of our solids. Here's the pH numbers. And so you could, you know, we played with it and go, by golly, if we don't put too much in the bottle in terms of loading, we can watch this thing. What we would do over again is we'd run the lighter one longer. We had the lights loading, we pull it. I wish I had left it a little longer because we thought, oh, it's done. We'll see that probably should have left it in a few slides as we go along. But you notice we're taking 65 some odd days process time. That's why it's not quick. We did a couple of these before we could do this one. So say we thought it'd be quick and dirty, it was dirty, not quick. So we want to look at the structure ratios. Because why not remove? Well, I want to know, I want to relate it to BS and TS destruction. That is one of the things I want to accomplish. That's where gas comes from. That's reduce the solids content. And so basically ratios of the mass after divided by four, one minus that gives it to you. And totals, volatiles, and fixed. Now, so if we look at the, on the average, I'm 0.45 on totals. But 0 0.605, 624, 62, average is 62. We're pretty happy. Why? Because again, we're using Hill's number of 6.63 to kind of answer the question, did we digest it enough? Would I like to stay a little longer? Yes. In the real world, we rarely get 0.63. So we said, we're there for practical purposes. That's pretty good. Notice, obviously, fixed solids should be nothing, but 0.01 give you a little idea of how it doesn't balance in the real world. There's, in fact, these sampling areas are greater usually than analytical errors, is what we found over the years. And we looked at concentrations before and after. The greens are after, the blacks are before. We got one that increased by 797 statistically, but we know it didn't happen. It went up in TKN. But a total anatomical nitrogen obviously increased significantly in all of them. Nitrate was kind of weird. The first one just kind of, it went, up a little and everything else decreased substantially. And if we look at the mineral nitrogen, it increased. By the way, I put that LSD of 0 0.05, 0 0.36 milligrams per liter. Basically, our mean is, could you really even say it's different from zero statistically? If it's plus or minus 0.36 and you average, you measure 0.31. Again, give us an idea. I mean, Rick showed variability on feedlots. You've got to realize there's some real world variability that just, it's real. It's not. It's not we didn't do a good job or the analytical, analytical people didn't do a good job. It's, it's there, so we have to deal with that. But I want to focus on mineral in. 37, 35, and 27 before. Before, what I call mineral in is I'm looking at all the ammonium and a little bit of nitrate we have. So we're going to total and nitrate. There's a little bit of ammonia in there. But afterwards, I'm in the well, 50s. I put more solids, it went down. That kind of makes some sense. So 65 down to 50. That definitely, I'm not going through the total plant available bit because there's, it changes on the organics and we don't have time for that today. That's not one of the key objectives on this. Then after that, what remained in terms of nutrients? I care about what's, what's still in there. So I look all the way down, TKN, 1.03 on the average, not significant, as we expect. No, no change in total Keldol total nitrogen, but guess what? The organic end did go down, and the total anatomical nitrogen did go up. Well, those were, were what's remaining, so we can now start looking at how much mineralized, how much transformed in these bottles. So on the average, 36% of the organic end, basically 1 minus 0.64, was mineralized to ammonium nitrogen. Okay? That's basically, and, and basically we got about a 84% increase in total anatomical nitrogen, basically ammonium. There'll be very little ammonia in that, right? Because pH is near neutral. So it got 50, and then 59% of the nitrogen on the average, it, it went away. It appears to be denitrified. We did not measure into or any of that kind of stuff. But yeah, it went down. One, it stayed about the same. One, it's crashed pretty well. And so that mineral end, up by a factor of 1.8. So yeah, that points to Obviously more availability, but more potential to lose stuff as volatilization from storages and land application if we don't take measures to reduce that. Direct injection being a, you know, a good idea. Some people are covering storages for that same reason. PKNS, pretty boring in general. We had statistically higher, lower value, but no, they're up and down again. You're seeing our 
problems in sampling. But what happened to the fraction or percent soluble? So before we digest, we're 24 to 27 some odd percent soluble phosphorus. And after digestion, we're somewhere in that 0.06 to 0.09 percent soluble phosphorus. phosphorus. So the microbes are doing what? They're using it, and I'm assuming it's in the dead microbial biomass. So it is going to organic forms. Okay. Potassium, don't expect anything to happen. We did get a significant reduction in sulfur on two of them. One, it wasn't much of anything. 6.4 milligrams per liter was the LSD on that one. And if we look at the uh, remaining normalized, the only, the only real news is soluble phosphorus, you know, things being transformed to organic forms, good to know. And I got 9.93% remaining of sulfur. Well, what could happen to that? I think the bottom thing happened. That's about in the order of magnitude. If you look at the chemistry, I'd expect to go to H2S. And again, that's something that's hard to predict. I'm not going to proclaim to be the expert in that. But on the average, 73% of the soluble P was converted to organic phosphorus from, from what we can look at. Total phosphorus stayed the same. So, we've got some good destruction. That's what we want to basically say, okay, we, it's, we've got some decent idea of what's happening to believe that we've got good digestion what's happening to nutrients. 36% mineralization. Reason I didn't put organic in is because part of that which would mineralize in your soil has already mineralized in your digester. So you got it's a little bit more complicated than what I want to go through. Okay, so it's not the same before and after in terms of organic in availability because it's about half has already happened in the digester. A lot more moons expect, all those things. And I'm going to go ahead and go to here. A lot of environmental engineers, they focus on the BOD5, COD, and they'll talk about how it reduces pollution potential, and I go time out, and not on the farm because I conserve my nutrients. In fact, I make some of them, especially nitrogen, more plant available, which means if I'm worried about volatilization losses, it's more susceptible to that. And so you need to think about those. We've known these things, but we're trying to get a number I could use and at least some sort of estimate, and we just couldn't find that in the data when we did that. So, Ammonia emissions from storage and land application really become the, the thing that's been enhanced potential in terms of uh, uh, air emissions because of this. And with that, again, this was had some energy office money, but again, our, our extension program put most of the funds into this. Did I get it done? We've got some time. All right. Time for some questions. Yes, sir. John, I guess I'm a little, little bit confused on the, uh -oh. the phosphorus. My, my understanding is with the digestion process, you're converting from organic to inorganic, makes it more available, but I guess from what I just heard from here, you went just the opposite? Well, the side will use my, by the microbes. They utilize that. Right. And then they're laying down, it's laying down, it's in an organic form in the mi microbial biomass. That's what we expect. So it now is it available? I think th I think it's just as available as ever because those things will decompose very quickly in the soil and become solubilized. You know, we it's pretty. You notice that it's around 20, 24 percent soluble phosphorus in the swine mix. It, in the, in poultry litter, it's around 20 percent soluble phosphorus. Dairy is somewhere around 20, 25 percent soluble phosphorus just in slurry. So, and it. <coughs> went into the organic form. You know, maybe from a runoff standpoint, it's an advantage not to have soluble phosphorus. What do you think? You know, that's one of the things we were looking at. Think as well, you know, that's a good thing. Because, like, alum is there for the purpose of tying up, actually ties it up forever, soluble phosphorus. Here, I'm not doing that, but it, I'm, I'm making it organic. Now, on the mass basis, it's all still there. 